Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Am Christina D'Arcangelo. And with me is a wonderful guest from across the pond, all the way from the UK, Lucy Gilmore. Thank you, Lucy, for joining me today. How are you? Hi, Christina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, first of all. And um, yeah, I'm very well. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to see your smiling face, especially since your recent news, in case you want to share with everyone. (laughs) Yes, Yes, it's safe to say that Huxley Morton is expanding. um, Well, certainly on the personal uh, side at the moment. Anyway, uh, James and I are expecting our second child. So, yeah, we're very excited about that. So Um, exciting. I mean, uh I'll tell you, I've been obviously since I met your husband, James, which then I met you as a result of James. So I'm so happy to be able to make my acquaintance with you now after I met James. I've been following you guys so closely. And so when I saw the news, I was ecstatic, you know, because it's always so awesome to see people like you guys who are good, moral compassed people who are trying to do good for society, who already have a kid that they're raising impeccably well, and now they're having another child. It's just so awesome. And talk to me about that because you already have a a big career. You already have one child, and now you're going to have another child come in. And as you know, know, in CD fashion, we always try to show our viewers or listeners something that brings us together because you know the whole theme is we are the same even though we're different people i live here in the united states Mm. you live in the uk we do we both work in traditional pharma at least i do sometimes not all the time anymore (laughs) but there's those things that tie us together as that we're the same but i feel most important to us as humans at least to you and i is the fact that we're moms and Absolutely. That's a big thing for us to have in common. So, yeah, talk to me about this. Um, well, yeah, I mean, um, I guess one of the reasons for starting Huxley Morton was because, um, you know, before before we started, James and I were working in the city. Um, we both had kind of, you know, quite high level jobs. We were doing long hours. Um, and whilst it was fun and everything like that, we'd done it for 10 years and it was kind of like, we can't sustain this level of work and have a family. Like we can't be getting into the city at six in the <laughs> six in the morning and leaving at seven at night and have a young family at home. Um, so it had always been in the back of our mind to to start our own business. Um, so I guess when that that we kind of you know, came to the conclusion that we wanted to start a family, it just felt natural to go, right, okay, well, let's start the business first. Um, so we started Huxley Morton, and then I think it was after about two years. We had Axel, which obviously worked out perfectly um, in terms of having, yeah, having that time, having that flexibility. At that time, it was just James and I in the business. So we both got to enjoy um, those early days, early months with Axel. Um, James was able to kind of support me in that, which was, you know, a fantastic help. Um as you know, those those first few months and being a first-time mum is a real game changer in experience no one no matter what anyone says no one can really prepare you for what that's really like um <laughs> deprivation and, and they, just, just they, learning a new right. person and what to do um, right and being of, responsible for somebody yeah. else rather than just yourself and absolutely and I think that you bring up an excellent point because this stuff's not in the books no. that we learn after we have the kit, right? And so it's not stuff that you can read. And, and if you can find something in a book, well, it's not going to be a whole bunch because if in fact it was, people probably wouldn't have children because they'd be fearful. You know, yeah. like I, I know exactly like Chris was up, Christian was up, ev- well, he was in the hospital when I had him because he had meconium, which- right. I didn't even know what meconium was, which I'm embarrassed to say because I'm a clinical researcher. You would think I would know. I know a lot of things, but that I didn't know. And he was there for a long time because his lungs, you know, he he wasn't um, mm -hmm, and he was like on an oscillating ventilator and all these things. And so when I brought him home, he was on a two hour feeding schedule. Thanks to the hospital. Wow. (laughs) That sucked. Yeah. 
So I was up yeah, every that's... two hours. I heard voices at one point because I was so <laughs> delirious. <laughs> I you, mean... do, you, you go to this kind of place that you've never been before. And it, I mean, obviously you get through it and uh, it's wonderful. And the, the hormones drag you through it, all those endorphins that you experience and everything else like that um get you through it but yeah it's safe to say it is it is tough but um yeah we're three years on now Axel turned three last month um and yeah um we, we're going again well this to say it was it was a tough um it's it's not been easy this second time round. I mean, I'm three years older, um, so I'm sure that hasn't helped. But definitely the sickness, the nausea, the tiredness. I don't like to complain because I feel fortunate enough to be blessed to be having uh, that opportunity to have a second child. But um, yeah, my God, it was it's it's been a tough couple of months. Fortunately, I'm I'm second trimester now, so I'm out of out of that. And um, yeah, the everything sort of subsided, so I'm feeling much better in my Self and able to yeah spend a full week at work rather than you know every couple of days thinking oh god <laughs> that's and that's the tough part right because mm. with every pregnancy it's different and yeah. you know a lot of times people will say well the second one's so much easier than the first yeah. one well in your case look it's not like the first yeah. one was easier than the second one my yeah. my first and only um you know experience being fully pregnant i had been pregnant prior to krish and i had a miscarriage Right. And so then I was afraid I wouldn't be able to have children because I work a stress, you know, I, I work a stressful job. Mm-hmm. And at the time that I, I was trying to conceive, I only had one company. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> um, all, all the other stuff didn't happen until after yeah. my son came. So right. um, when I was able to have Chris, I was sick the whole time, the whole pregnancy. I only gained 25 pounds because wow. I was throwing up all the time. <laughs> Gosh, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish that upon anyone to be experiencing it for that length of time because yeah, you're kind of sitting unlike a unlike a I guess a, a cold or when you feel ill when you get um yeah a cold or something like that, you kind of know it's gonna last a week and then you know I'll be out of it. But but in pregnancy, you just don't know how long is this gonna last? Am I gonna feel like this for the whole tr- whole term? Is it gonna go after a couple of weeks? And it, it can it can really play havoc with your mental health. I noticed I definitely had a decline in my mental health for that sort of first couple of weeks when I was feeling really rough. That sort of six to eight weeks time, I was yeah, I was I was not in a happy place at all. But yeah, fortunately, I managed to kind of pick myself up, and that didn't turn into anything sort of long term, um, you know. And and hopefully, it won't return. Well, thank you. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's brave for you to admit that you know, out loud, because a lot of times moms don't do that. Um, They don't talk about these things. They don't talk about postpartum depression. Um, I know, you know, with my son, I had postpartum because I left the hospital without him. I wasn't prepared to do that. Right. I was prepared to go home and I took everything very personally because this is just who I am as a human, right? I'm responsible for, you know, everybody that's around me. That's what I feel, which is good or bad. I've gone through a lot of therapy. So we've had some changes since, you know, this incident, but um, I should have gone through therapy after I had Christian because I suffered a loss when I came home without him. And then just like, did I do something to cause this meconium to occur? I mean, I was a strict, like I followed everything, tons of omega, no lunch meat, no, you know, sushi, you know, no shrimp, you know, like I did everything by the book and lived as healthy as possible, ate a whole bunch of kale, hate kale, but I did it anyway, (laughs) because, you know, and, and then, you know, I have him and then I finally bring him home and it was just like, I mentally, I was just not, I wasn't functioning fully to the point where my pop, you know, my, my big, bad teamster pop was like, something's not right. You know, like he noticed and Mm. he was like talking to me about it. And so it was kind of interesting to see him talk to me about it when typically men don't talk about mental health like that, you know? So I completely, I completely understand how you must be feeling and how, and you know what else I wanted to, I wanted to mention, and I'm not trying to make this into a COVID discussion, but I thought about something because, you know, I've been working with all these long hauler people and Uh I, you know, I disclosed to you prior to getting on the call, I had 
COVID and I've seen mm. things happen to me as a result since, but I had two yeah. autoimmune diseases prior to getting COVID. So it was like, oh uh, boy, uh, this is going to be a disaster. Do you think, and I wonder this, right? Because yeah. I haven't seen any data about yeah. this since, and there's been lots of pregnant people since COVID. Mm -hmm. I wonder if your body has changed to the COVID mm. infection and it's harder now for you because of Possibly. it. Possibly, yeah. I, do you know, I hadn't even thought of it that way. But, yeah, I mean, I I had COVID in January and um, I fell pregnant in, in March. So quite possibly, I mean, that's only two months away apart. So quite possibly that was that was an impact of, of, of COVID having on my body. Because, yeah, as I say, it was it was certainly felt worse um, than first time around. I'd kind of put it down to just being a bit older and, um, you know, probably having a toddler <laughs> and lack of sleep. <laughs> Whereas before, you know, you're on your own, you kind of can take a nap whenever and uh, you can kind of do what, what you have a full night's sleep. But yeah, quite possibly. Maybe that is definitely something that, yeah, that, that could be looked into further. Yeah, I'm just because you know my research brain. So like yeah. I'm not I'm not offending yeah. you that I come up with these connecting weird... the dots there. Yeah, but I <laughs> you know, like I watch for myself, like when something yeah. happens, like I get since I've had COVID, mm. I get these like it's like a, a a band, like almost like I would have a Nike sweatpant on or something, a band of tension headaches now. Oh. It goes all the way across and then it pulsates yeah. here at my temples. And mm. I never had this, right? I get, I've mm. got migraines before. I mean, heck, Avum has migraine patches for God's sakes. You know, he is, <laughs> um, we have a lot of staff that gets migraines, but this is not a migraine. Yeah. This is like, it's like a pulsating. I have never experienced. And it feels like my head's in a vice, this part of my head. And it, it feels like, you know, like if you hold your eyebrows up like this for a long period of yeah. time, this gets really tired, your muscles. Tense. That's how it feels. <laughs> you might be on to something definitely yeah I think I think I think everyone should be probably aware of of how they're feeling after COVID because I guess we just don't know right there's so I guess there's so many studies and so many different it's new to all of us so it's kind of like everyone should be a case study for you know flagging those irregular feelings or emotions or yeah yeah to them after after covid um, yeah even the mental look into it even the mental health stuff i know for me personally since i've had covid and i'm not making you say this otherwise i'm just saying so you know where i'm coming yeah. from i'm i'm being you know vulnerable and i'm not trying to point my finger at you but yeah. i know since i've had i've had covid my anxiety at times just will creep up for no reason like all of a yeah. sudden it's like zero to a hundred, like, woo, up here, right? Where I'm like, I need to go downstairs and hit the back, you know, like, because I can feel myself and I don't know why. And it just happens. There's nothing different. My jobs are still the same. Yeah, we're, we're always running th through something, right? Business isn't easy being an entrepreneur and a woman in business either. But it, I've noticed though, that my anxiety is worse. So I, I wonder... If, you know, when you said you were feeling a little more yeah. down because yeah, you were yeah. sick, I wonder if, again, if that is attributed to the fact that there is, there is literature out there that says people who've had COVID suffer from anxiety worse yeah. now than they did before. And there's mental health implications, i.e. depression yeah. as a result. Yeah. I'm not trying to say you're depressed. I'm just saying, you know, give yeah. yourself a break. Lucy, no, absolutely. I think as well. I'm certainly conscious of, and I and to be fair, I was um, first time round, um, just about watching out for my mental health, um, and and particularly after having Axel and after our second baby, because my mum suffered from postnatal depression, um, and and undiagnosed. To be honest, I mean it's still pretty much undiagnosed to this day, but I think it's safe to say on reflection, you can, you can pinpoint that that was um, postnatal depression. Like you, she, she, um, she left me outside a shop once and forgot, <laughs> <laughs> and forgot I was there. Um, but also more seriously, um, she actually, she actually walked out of my life at nine months Aww. and left us as of, as you know, um, and my dad's brought me up ever since. I mean, I have that relationship with my mum now, but 
it's always been uh it's always been strained um i mean we have our we have our moments where it's great and obviously not so great but you know i'm very aware that 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 maybe that start to our relationship was where you know it it kind of went so yeah i'm uh, i'm i'm conscious that you know as soon as as soon as that kind of mental health takes a decline to get help before you know I, history repeats itself <laughs> i can i commend you for saying that out loud and sharing that with me because not a lot of people will do that um yeah. i know i didn't do it for the longest time you know about my relationship with my mom i i i finally told your husband james yeah. because i was like you know what I, um, my therapist knows, right. And my inner circle knows, but I just, I really just never shared it because I felt like, you know, I don't want people to think I'm talking mean about my mom. I'm not. Um, but it did contribute to who I am today. And that's, 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 that's like, um, you know, I've, I've thought a lot about it this week and, you, you know, people, friends of mine always used to say, because um, I had a relationship with her growing up, but it was, um, you know, I always lived with my dad, so we'd see each other every other weekend. But you could never predict if she was going to turn up on those weekends. You know, she either would or she wouldn't. Or when she did, we'd be going out to bars and nightclubs. And I was oh. like eight or nine years old. I shouldn't have been in those places. I shouldn't <laughs> no. have been seeing what I was seeing at those ages. So um and yet my uh relationship and and home with my dad he'd remarried um a doctor and so we had a very kind of normal structure Mm -hmm. structure you know you go to school I went to private school you do your homework it was very you're a good person society (laughs) yeah and you had this other side of it every other weekend your life was flipped upside down and it was like chaos um and that that kind of went on for for years obviously but um, people used to say, my friends used to say, oh my God, your life, you know, would you change it? You know, would you, you know, and I was just like, no, because that one, that's all I know. <laughs> so yeah. to me, it doesn't feel not normal. Uh, I, I, I kind of, you kind of know that, you know, I guess your, friends, your life is different. Yes. But to you, it's your normal. Um, and yeah, you just, um, it, it makes you the person you are today. And without those life experiences, I'd be someone different. So no, would I change it? Absolutely not. And, uh, you know, me and my mum, we have a relationship now. Um, you know, we talk and, and and we go out. It's probably not your traditional mum-daughter relationship that a lot of people have, but there's a relationship there. So, right. you know, we, we've got through it effectively. It's, it's okay, though. That's your relationship. Yeah. That's not up to other people to judge. It, my mom and my relationship yeah. is not. I'm more mm-hmm. like the maternal person. I mm-hmm. kind of feel like you're that way with your mom, where you're exactly. more the maternal yeah. versus the child. Yeah. And that's difficult for us. But yeah. you know what? At the end of the day, it's made us the moms we are today. Yeah. And look yeah. at the awesome mom you are to Axel and the mom you're going to be to the next baby that's coming, you know, up behind him. Yeah. So it's, it's so like, although it was a negative experience, I mean, there's been a lot, you, 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 you've had a lot of negativity. Yeah. The positive is, well, that's the thing, isn't it? I know now not how to do it. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's great because you can, you can go through life with people that do things amazing, but you might not learn that that's kind of the great way to do it. Whereas when you see things that maybe being done the way they shouldn't, or there's problems or the, the outcomes of what those, you know, behaviors create, you kind of know, I'm not going to, I don't want to be like that. That's and right. That's almost stronger than than having seen someone do it perfectly and try and emulate that it's kind of easier to go I'm not going to be that person I'm going to be this kind of mum um and so for me I mean my whole world is Axel and James and you know the new baby will be part of that so yeah completely different different people but um I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah as I say change that experience because it's as I say it's made me the mum I am today and the person I am today I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And obviously you and I could talk forever about, (laughs) about this topic and lots of other things that we have in common, but I want to thank you 
for coming on and talking to me about this. This is not where we expected this, the podcast to go, right? We, <laughs> we didn't script it. We just, you know, we talked to the beginning, yeah. but we talked about some of this stuff. So it kind of just mm. organically infused, I think. And that's, I, that's one of the things I love about my podcast is that, you know, I come in and I know certain things I want to talk to the guest about because yeah. again, what we align as humans is really important for yeah. me to demonstrate to our listeners, right? Or viewers. Um, but I didn't expect this to turn out this way. So I really appreciate you being so vulnerable with me and talking to me about this. And this has been an awesome um, journey having you on here today right. and, and having you share this with me. Well, it's been a pleasure, Christina, and, and thank you for having me on. And um, yeah, I, mean, I hope I haven't overshared there, but um, yeah, I guess uh, it's part of who I am. So we can't we can't change that. No, and I don't think you overshared, you know, like I think that what you shared was legitimate and how you were feeling today in the moment discussing these things. And, you know, you already know how I feel about this whole situation with mom daughter relationships. So yeah. it was easier for you, I guess, to talk about it with someone like me who yeah. understands and I don't judge because who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah. we, we both had experiences with our parents that are kind of, yeah or similar wavelengths. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I love about the show. And I'm so happy that you expressed that today because I feel like we really demonstrate it, that we are the same today as, as we like yeah. to share. And I just wanted to thank you again for being on with me today. Thank you so much. No problem. And good luck with your pregnancy. You know, I'll be stalking you on uh, social media, <laughs> just making sure everything is good, you know, because <laughs> I no enjoy problem. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be putting up the, the posts and sharing the journey with you. It's so exciting. So thank you again. And remember everyone, we are the same. I am Christina D'Arcangelo. Mm-hmm.